I like to think I don't have too many bad habits, but one that I'm definitely aware of is that whenever I'm working on, well, really anything, I tend to not put things back where they belong, especially when it comes to the shop, is that work right up to dark, right up to dinner, right up to the point of exhaustion, and then tend to just throw things into the shop. So we end up with this. Ugh. Which I hope to eventually overcome. And it's part of the reason we started the whole series on fixing the Quonset hut and all the work we began last winter in here and hope to get back to now is to finish out this building finally get shelves up and actually get things organized up off the floor and find a space for them in this building. So, it's time to pay the piper. Night number two. It's hard during the week to get long periods for work. So get out of here, do well to get an hour, but you can get a lot done an hour trying to get things again cleaned up, put back where they should have been in the first place and get ready for the weekend and much bigger projects out here. So here we go. Two nights of getting in here and cleaning up. So it's Saturday, time to get in and do a little, a little bit of work. So we're gonna cut, got some pieces of plywood, and uh, these are the, just the really cheap furring strips that you can get in the back of Lowe's for about a dollar something a piece. And we're gonna try and get in here to do quickly is rip the plywood into some shelves that are gonna what we'll do is uh, tack one of those strips on along underneath here, set the shelf on this, and then we're gonna go up here and attach another strip, cut it, uh, rip it at an angle and attach it here, and then be able to drop down strips to the front of the shelf as a support. We're gonna drop a second shelf, uh, attach another face strip onto the face of this, these supports coming down, run out and drop more support. So we'll actually put in two shelves well, that's what we're going to try and do really quick today is see if we can get these shelves up. I hold on a life in the palm of my hand I think God must really love this life And though heaven above Can't stop me now Walk 
can arrive. Chasing after my shadow. All right, day three completed. We've got two shelves up. So top shelf is about 24 inches deep, 13 inches down, and we'll use that for things that we don't need readily. Obviously, things like paint cans will fit out up there, some other things back behind it. And then this lower shelf ended up about 15 and a half inches down. It's about 14 inches deep. It's obviously a much more unusual uh, shape for a shelf or the space behind it. So what we're gonna do is run another one of these one and a half inch furring strips. And we're gonna put them on the inside here and then another uh, cleat on the back wall and run a, a rip, a seven or eight inch piece of what's left of the plywood to add another little shelf inside of here. I just think that it's such an unusual space that we're gonna lose a lot of potential storage if we don't put another shelf up there. So have that to put some smaller things up above and then some larger, deeper things underneath it. We're gonna be able to add LED lights underneath this cabinet, uh, along with things like, you know, places to be able to hang cordless drills, things like that. But we'll have light down here and then underneath this whole row of receptacles that we put in, if you remember from the previous video doing that, we'll have a workbench, wall-mounted workbench that's gonna come out over the top of these cabinets. So we'll be able to work along the whole length of this, well, this side of the Quonset hut, but we're gonna go at least for these, this 16 feet on this side of the building. And it'll come out fairly deep, at least two feet deep off of the wall. So we'll have a lot of great workspace, be able to get all this stuff that's on the cabinets right now that doesn't have a place to go up into these shelves or storage, or to hang on this back wall or the end wall behind here. So we'll have ready access to wrenches, hammers, and all those things finally. We can actually get them out of the cabinets and back up where they'll be easy to get to. And they're really strong. I mean, for how inexpensive this was, and we looked at all of our options and materials, I mean, these cabinets or these shelves will, it'll hold my body weight going up there. So a huge thank you to this guy. I just, I never, can't get over what a blessing it is to really have Isaac to be able to help. He just turned 15 at the uh, end of last year in December, and he is certainly growing into a much stronger young man to be able to get up taller and stronger to get up and help hold these things overhead and never complains once. There's one thing about you that I just, uh, no matter what, he, he never ever complains uh, and comes out here and just works and works hard and stays at it. And the other really exciting news we found out at the end of December for him is that he had applied for a grant through Future Farmers of America and... Yep. So I won $1,000 from CCOF, which is uh, California Certified Organic Farmers. And so I'm hopefully going to restore the greenhouse and um, use it to um, raise plant starters to sell to people and start a business. Yeah, so... Yeah, so we'll actually finally restore. So that'll be all the, the end walls and the plastic and fans and a number of other things that you outlined and put in. And he got a whole business proposal. So doing organic heirloom vegetable starts that will sell. So obviously people get a lot of things at the big box stores, their, their vegetable plants. But he's going to order a bunch of seeds and have a lot of options for people to come here on the farm. We'll have probably some open houses or something to be able to buy and then, and then sell them as well at school 
through the FFA. So anyways, a big congratulations to him. That'll be a big blessing, not only for him, because we're sort of in an area rurally where at his age, because he can't drive, uh, we don't have uh, really any farms around us that he could work at and to make money. And he also, of course, can't drive. And if he did, it would even it would be a way. So this is a great, uh, a, really a, a, a tremendous opportunity for him to be able to make some money here on the farm and do something and stuff he likes doing anyways and be out here and but it's also a blessing for us on the farm because then obviously we we reap the benefit of having the greenhouse restored and be able to grow things uh, you know into extend our growing season for vegetables so anyways that's really cool all right well that's it we're going to get in keep cleaning things up get things out of the way and then start working this way and finish the other half of the building hopefully in this month because we got to really start on the greenhouse to keep on his timeline for the grant we got to finish uh well start the greenhouse in in sometime in february so we've got a few weeks to finish this uh, try and get in here and do some work we'll probably work on both a little bit at a time anyways or jump back and forth but well, that's it from St. Isidore's Farm. Hope everyone is well. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, take care and God bless.